welcome to Cover Story. Today we have with us Subhip Chakravarti. He is an author, a journalist, and also someone who's uh, lived in Delhi. I say that because his latest book is about Delhi. He calls it Fallen City, a double murder, political insanity, and Delhi's descent from grace. Uh, he writes about the 70s and the 80s. That, that period actually covers a lot of turbulent times, uh, focusing on the uh, horrific murder of Sanjay and Geeta. I think anybody who lived in the Delhi's at that time knew about this murder that really shook the nation of two young kids, a 15 and a 17-year-old, 16-year-old. Uh, I'll let Sudeep tell us all the details about what happened and the aftermath and why he chose this topic. This is also the period of the emergency. This is also a period that led to Indira Gandhi's killing. So, Sudeep, uh, welcome to this conversation and congratulations on your latest book. Priya, thank you so very much, uh, one, for your kind words and also to give me uh, an opportunity to have a conversation with you uh, about the book uh, and, of course, more importantly, about the times that the book uh, aims to uh, reflect. I actually, And thank you for asking that question. I mean, it's it might seem a little odd that we're sitting mm -hmm. in 2024 and, and I've written books on... Uh, foreign affairs, on internal security, on ethnography, on culture, on history, a wide range of issues, uh, and regional affairs. And then I choose to uh, address a topic which is uh, set in late 1970s or mid-1970s to about mid-1980s Delhi in particular. Now, the reason I did this is that I think uh, for a couple of reasons, or maybe three reasons, if you would let me quickly elaborate on these. Yes. And briefly. Um, one is that, you know, it, it was... The time of uh, I identify very closely with the with Geeta Chopra and Sanjay Chopra. I think people of my generation always have because yes. they were really people like us. Uh, I was Sanjay was my age when he was killed. Uh, Geeta was two years older than us. I mean, we could so easily have been them, and that is, I think, gripped us and. Uh, uh, for our viewers, can you just uh, go over the facts of the case? Uh, you know, um, uh, you write about it in, in your book. Uh, I think Sanjay was studying in modern school. Geeta was in uh, uh, Jesus and Mary College. They were both Indeed. going for a uh, audition or a Indeed. program at uh, Doodarshan. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, when, uh, so just tell us a bit, tell our viewers a bit. Because this, you know, I'm not surprised at the timing at all, given the fact that we are dealing with the Nirbhaya case and what's happening in Kolkata. Indeed. Indeed. So uh, first about the case, then we'll talk about the book. Uh, certainly. So... Uh... I mean, as, as you just mentioned, that uh, Geeta Chopra and Sanjay Chopra siblings were uh, on their way to All India Radio on the 26th of August, uh, 1978, because Geeta had a program that she was to record. And uh, Sanjay was being the brother and the chaperone and her friend and her support system. I mean, they, they were very, very close and they stood by each other. And I think she, he was being a companion as well as a very proud brother. And en route, uh, they were waylaid, literally waylaid, and uh, in the most murky of circumstances, uh, so goes the judicial records and the invest police investigations at the time, uh, were kidnapped by people who we've come to know as Birla and Ranga, uh, by their nicknames, if you will, not by their formal names. The formal names, in fact, are only recorded in the police uh, registry and in the judicial records, but we know them as Birla and Ranga. Um, and uh, they've, of course, been uh, become symbols of absolute infamy uh, since then. And because, because uh, going by the investigative records and the judicial records, uh, they were accused to have uh, attacked, molested, and then ultimately butchered the, the siblings uh, in Buddha Jayanti Park. Uh, all um, within 48 hours. All Well, all within... Uh, not 48 hours, all within uh, five hours. 48 hours. hours. 48 hours is what it took for their bodies to be discovered. So they were abducted uh, before 7 p.m. And by the night, by the evening, by the time the evening was over, by the time the night was done, the children were dead. And Billa and Ranga were on the run. It was the bodies were discovered uh, on the late night of 28th of August and early morning of 29th of August by cow herders who were taking their uh, their wards along for you know sort of feeding and a walk from their uh, the cow cow sheds and they're the ones who came across the body because one of them a few of them 
uh, sense that there was a stench of putrefaction. And they went to investigate. And then uh, that led to the discovery of uh, the bodies of Geeta Chopra and Sanjay Chopra. And that shook us to the core. I remember uh, I just got into class 10. So uh, as a side show, you, that tells you how old I am. But I'm proud to be of the generation of Geeta and Sanjay because uh, their deaths absolutely shook us to the core. Uh, this was sort of the... Uh, the India coming of age, we were coming of age, and with us, India was coming of age. Uh, you, all the all the bad wars were over. We were looking forward to a life of uh, growth, of prosperity, of ambition, of fulfillment, of very many things that uh, school children and high school children and college children would do at any time, not just then, but now. Mm. And I think when we learned of their deaths, we were shaken to the core because they were like us, uh, uh, we, I was in boarding school. Uh, I remember absolute shock when the newspapers arrived uh, on on Monday because uh, this happened on a Saturday, and it, uh, I'm in. I was in Ajmer, so it took overnight trains to for the. But I remember the atmosphere of fear that gripped, I think, uh, the absolutely. entire country Abs because, as absolutely. you said, there were just young kids, uh, streets of Delhi, and crowded Delhi, Gold Market. You know where they were, where the, the Dudarshan offices. They were indeed, the people. indeed, indeed, and 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 in fact. Uh, I mean, it, it just sort of transformed Delhi. People were in shock. Uh, lifts were were the in thing then. People used to. It was very fashionable for men and women, boys and girls, to take lifts. I mean, I remember the hitchhike. Oh, hi, yeah, and hi, hitchhike, and we would stick our thumbs up because we thought it was very cool. And there were a lot of Hollywood movies during that time, and a lot of Bollywood movies where it was very fashionable to stick your thumb out and hitch a ride because that was the cool new India as well. And the the hitchhiking stopped. Uh, lift stop. People were in, uh, in in great distress. Parents, all they could talk about was beta uh, sab uh, Are you all right? I mean, there was a great concern about how uh, this brave new India could so easily be destroyed. And it, it's ironical, of course, because there were great atrocities taking place, even as uh, the tragic deaths and horrific deaths of Gita and Sanjay happened. But as Priya, as you're very well aware, when uh, it hits close to home is usually when uh, the people like us syndrome kicks in and people begin to react because it becomes a very immediate kind of thing. And that's how the human condition works, unfortunately. unfortunately. Right. That's that's how it, it, it works. And I thought that, uh, you know, it takes time. I mean, uh, I, I recall that uh, as a writer, and you will appreciate this as well, there is a certain time and place, there is a certain rhythm to a book. There's a, there's a certain time and place where the writer and the publisher are coincident, co coincidentally comfortable about approaching a particular story that needs to be told. And I felt, I've always felt that this story needs to be told. And what struck me many years later when I was, uh, when I was an adult, I was a journalist in Delhi and uh, Billa and Ranga kept cropping up. Uh, as as phrases, literally hyphen, as sort of a conjoined hyphenation, and they would never go. Anytime there was great evil in the land, political or criminal, uh, it was always Billa and Ranga. Uh, politicians right. began to throw the curse at each other. It became like a bad word. It became a curse, uh, Billa and Ranga. But Gita and Sanjay Chopra, whom they killed, were forgotten, almost forgotten, except for a couple of stray awards that are given out every year by well-meaning people and the foundation set up by their parents and, of course, uh, as a gesture adopted by the government of India. The, the perpetrators live on, and, and that irony has never escaped me. Uh, and it has always stayed with me, Priya, that I wanted to tell that story at some point in my life when I thought it was appropriate. Unfortunately, in my journalistic life and as an author, I went into other journeys and other travels mm. Uh, upon which I wrote my books. But I think it was a good time when I was reflecting upon this uh, after actually having finished a book around 2018, 2019. I was thinking, how about this? Did and uh, that was also a time I sensed of a political churn. And it took me back when I was trying to locate where Gita and Sanjay were, where Billa and Rang Ranga took shape. It was an amazing arc that opened up in front of me. I said, my goodness, 1975, the imposition of the emergency, India in complete turmoil, complete uh, 
uh, destruction of civil liberties of every form. As a journalist, and you as a journalist and a writer, you will appreciate the lack of freedom of speech and expression. It hits hard. Uh, and that, uh, as, a, as a teenager at that time, I recall Indian Express and the Statesman running editions with blank spaces as a, as a sign of protest. And we could see that these, there were uh, the country was in great churn, that the Empress of India, Indira Gandhi, was not quite the infallible person that we all thought our parents told us she was, because she had won the war against uh, Pakistan and, and sort of mothered the birth of Bangladesh, if you will. And Bangladesh, yes. You, you see, in 71. So it was a time of great churn. And in the 70s, while I was in school, I was in class 10, like uh, Sanjay Chopra, 1978, the uh, the... Uh, the Congress has lost the elections in a massive landslide, and it was unimaginable to see the the fall of an empire, which we were a political empire, which we were seeing with our very eyes, we were experiencing it uh, as people who were coming into adulthood at that point right. of time. Mm. And uh, 78 was in the thick of it when Gita and Sanjay were killed by Birla and Ranga. Uh, at that time, you had the Janta government in full meltdown already a year and a half into its uh, its own formation. It, it, you could sense that there was a great amount of dislocation taking place and the Congress were waiting in the wings to, to come back, right back and it happened. Uh, mm. within, within months it happened. Then Indira right. Gandhi, Sanjay Gandhi, the demonic... Just to get back to Sanjay, I mean, I know the yeah. events of history, yeah. Yeah. but yeah. to get back to Sanjay and Gita, did you um, uh, speak to the parents when you were writing the book? Where are the parents now? In that one well, moment? well the, the parents... Uh, so, but... Um, just to take it back, so it was very fascinating to complete the arc of mm. ended in 1984. It was almost like what began in emergency ended in 1984. So it was Thanks. nice to look at the so fallen city, therefore, is not just about uh, Gita and Sanjay. It is also more than Gita and Sanjay. It is about a, a, a capital city, which was taking a country along with it in implosion, in meltdown. So it was a time yeah. of uh, great churn and hence the uh, the name fallen city which talks about this arc of the story but um to to, uh, to answer my question about the parents indeed uh i uh, took a considered decision to not uh i i did find out of course where the parents lived what they did uh where the residences were their email addresses the phone numbers but i thought uh, for ethical reasons, I would not make a cold call because I don't want to walk up to somebody and do the bad journalistic practice thing, which I feel very, very strongly about. But you have the home. email, so did you write to them? No, even even so. Uh, mm -hmm. I had everything. I knew where they lived. But I thought that I should approach them through mutual friends. And that's exactly yeah. what I did. Because I thought that was the right thing to do. I believe in the ethical approach. I'm com I abhor the approach of going into a disaster zone and somebody's passed away, family, and I stick a mic into their face and say, "What do you feel?" Uh, that is not the practice that I would uh, I, I I I propose uh, or I've ever practiced. So my way of doing this was that I knew I would tell the story with or without the parents, the story and the story of Delhi and the fallen city and of the life and times. Uh, of India, cap the capital of India and India at that time, was a story that I would tell regardless because there was enough information for me to do so. But right. I deliberately chose to approach the Chopras through common friends, which I mentioned in the book, actually. It's at the, towards the end of the book, I explain my process. I actually reached out to, with mutual friends and I was sitting in the room when uh, the call was put on speaker and Roma Chopra, uh, was explained my purpose because that was a proper way of approaching it. That you know he means well. He's not going to sensationalize it. He wants to tell a larger story. But your children are a very important part of it. But they're not going to be uh, 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 sort of insulted. Their memory is not going to be made undignified. You know these right. communications need to be made, and you will appreciate this as a as a media person yourself of long standing. At that time, the um, I heard loud and clear, Roman Chopra, sharp as a knife, say, absolutely not, no way, and Madan won't talk either. And for me, that was the 
Lakshman Rekha, if you will, of media ethics. And as a, as a general, for everybody, if the parents don't want to talk, I think then that's a- absolutely. It. I'm and going I think, to uh, take a break and come I, back and keep the conversation going, but after a quick break. Hello and welcome back to Cover Story. We're here talking to Shudeep Takravarti. We're talking about his uh, book, Fallen City, that talks about Delhi in the 70s, the turbulent times, 70s and 80s. Uh, turbulent times politically, but we were also talking about the murder that really sent shockwaves and fear down. Every school-going child, every parent at that time, the Sanjay and Gita murders. Um, so, so, you know, what really, as you said, uh, you know, children, uh, unfortunately, where we live, horrific incidents like this were happening all the time. But this was someone, one knew someone, you know, modern school, JMC, uh, all of Delhi, you know, um, mm-hmm. uh, familiar with the roads and the fact that it happened in broad daylight. Uh, the, there were people who actually saw them being abducted in in the car struggling uh, but still they were not being uh, able to be caught and today you see something like this happen with nirbhaya also so have we where have we come from then to now uh, we haven't really traveled down the road of restitution very well i'm afraid Priya. Uh, and uh, that speaks not very well of us as a nation and of us as a people and also of our judicial process of our criminal justice system in particular that uh, it must take absolute and utter outrage, a horrific crime and outrage for something to be justiciable, for uh, a process to kick in. Uh, I, 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 let me go back to Gita and Sanjay. There was outrage there, deaths like Nirbhaya, like the unfortunate yes. lady in Kolkata, not to, just uh, several days ago. It needed a a uh, flaring up of outrage, which then escalated their mentions into the parliament. Like Gita and Sanjay were discussed in parliament at a time yes. when India Pakistan was at the top of the agenda. The Congress and the Janata government were at each other's throats. Uh, the parliament was a daily circus that uh, even before the parliament became a circus of the present day, it is it is absolutely astounding as to how much in, in in how much similarity uh these 40 plus years uh, have from yeah. 1978 to 2024 there is a great connect of emotion there is a great great connection exactly as you asked where have we come in all these years we've come a long way as you know uh, in as as a country in terms of our economic growth and our social emancipation in many ways and our consumer uh, aspirations and middle class aspirations and so on and so forth, all of that. But I think at the very root, at, at, at the very basic levels, we are still not able to provide a sense of security to great numbers of our population and most certainly to women, to the women, mm-hmm. to the to the young ladies of India, to the young girls of India, to the young, right. to the infants of India. We are, uh, we are continually failing our children. So you went through the archives and the interviews uh, that they gave the, to uh, to uh, at least a couple of publications. Uh, that uh, what did you uh, you know make out of them? The psyche, you know, what motivated these guys? What works? I mean, it's just well, the mind of. Are you talking about the mind of Bill and Ranga? I presume. Correct. At, at yeah. Point of time. So in, indeed, I mean, they were. Uh, I mean, I spent. Uh, I've lost count of the number of days I spent in the archives going through uh, digital records, I mean, on, on microfilm and on other mediums uh, of, of the media and magazines during that particular time. Uh, we only have the newspapers uh, in uh, primarily in English and in Hindi and a handful of magazines who thought it worthwhile. And I'm so happy that they thought it worthwhile because they actually helped me do my research because they were uh, my... And what were your findings? Uh, findings was that... Uh, that and what were their findings too? I mean, I'm basing it on three uh, separate things over here. One is the media findings as the media reported it, but they were based on police findings, investigative findings, because we must base our, our thing on that, and also the judicial findings, because after all, the, uh, the case went from the lower courts right up to the Supreme Court, uh, and uh, it was reviewed many times over, because they were given the death sentence and... Uh, whenever there was a sort of an appeal for remission, yeah. it, it, the case was examined. Now, what is surprising that there was uh, 
Bila and Ranga and the defense teams were obviously employing obfuscation. I mean, they were de denying that they ever did anything. And Bila's confession and Ranga's confession blame the murder of the children on the other. So Bila blames Ranga, blame Ranga, Ranga blamed Bila. And this pattern continued right through uh, from the time that they made their statements in front of the magistrate legal statements which they later withdrew and right through the judicial process from 1978 to the time that they were hanged in 1982 uh, they they kept putting the blame on the other person so they never really denied that they abducted them they, no they didn't deny that they thought that they would score an easy kill if i may be lurid enough to say that but easy kill not with their deaths but easy kill with a financial benefit that came from a ransom. Uh, 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 from uh, uh, abducting them, a ransom, if you will. And, um, and of course, there were a lot of motives that media put, uh, thanks to police who were literally going riot, uh, to, to use a lurid analogy, by offering all kinds of theories as to the motive when they had no clue, because they had to justify uh, their uh, existence and they had to justify that they were on the ball. So they went yes. from everything from uh, Billa and Ranga, Billa in particular, was projected as this a mastermind of uh, abductor and killer who had uh, uh, sort of uh, scared Mumbai, Bombay those days into submission. And but they, when you look at the, the process, when you look at their own statements, as to what happened, even though the mm. things were blamed, uh, they blamed on each other. They seem to be a bunch of bungling, amateurish, trigger happy, knee jerk criminals. They were not the sophisticated masterminds, criminal masterminds that they were made out to be by a very, very panicky police who had to show that they were on the right. ball. To the to the leaders and the citizens of India, but they just seem to be a very clumsy bunch of uh, people who panicked into uh, killing in in a way, uh, butchering, chopping, hacking these two teenagers. But that's teenagers. Uh, it, it was a very uh, that is the outcome, and the motive is we're still tied to the motive being the abduction for ransom. And yeah. even if you were to believe the Bombay police's um, input and the Delhi police input, and there was a theory at that time, which is reflected in the book, because I can't but not reflect it, was that, I mean, they even put a sort of a, um, a spin on Billa's motive that he liked to abduct people and he liked to rape women. That was the sort of the identity, the psychological identicate, if you will, the psycho profile of Billa that was presented by Bombay police and then picked up on by Delhi police uh, very, very quickly uh, on that. And so there was this sort of uh, profile created of them. But the, the way the crime progressed, the way the crime, crime took place, the way that was the stop and start, that the, the fiat that they took the two children in were actually stopped uh, at, at one point of time by a lot of people and then it was a stop and start uh, they went around literally went around in circles for several hours and then um, they sort of uh, overpowered the teenagers in Buddha Jayanti Park and hacked them to death it doesn't speak of a great sophistication in planning and execution it doesn't speak to me of, uh, That's just the you know the most heart wrenching part of it all. The way you know uh, it, it, they just happened to be there, and just, someone just yeah. felt like going on a killing spree, and that was it. And, that and is the indeed, and in fact, uh, as you know from the book, uh, Priya, is that they were uh, they they uh, stole um, a fiat uh, with the yeah. express purpose uh, to do abductions and you know pick people up uh, for ransom. And they were on the trawl all of 26th of August. They were in Connaught Place. They were going around central Delhi. And when they were about to give up by their own admission, by Ranga's confession, uh, which was a judicial confession, that they were actually tired, that they didn't, they hadn't found any marks through the day. And they were going to call it a day, literally, when they chanced upon these two uh, fair-looking, almost foreigner-like uh, uh, children it's, because of their yeah. uh, complexion and, and their stature and their height 
and they were very good looking children, both of them, Gita and Sanjay. And they thought that they'd found their marks because they had to be prosperous. They had to come from a um, sort of a wealthy family and they were thumbing the right. So they were modern and cool. So they were in, they, they found. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.